my father taught us that as a man in life, there are only two things that people can't take away from you, your integrity and your word and your education. I think I've been angry and upset about the, the student loan crisis in our country. And I was someone who had a blueprint to pay for college uh, and it didn't work out. And I've had to take on an astronomical uh, amount of debt. It doesn't make sense as to why uh, we as Americans have to go through so much just to receive a quality education. When Marvin was growing up, I always wanted them to know that the way to open the door to the future was through education. And being African American, it was even more important. College was a must, it, it wasn't an option. As a black man in America today, with $78,000 of debt, I have a very small margin of error. I have to be twice as good as everyone else around me. I have to worry every day, uh, am I gonna come home? Uh, after I've, uh, I've left the house. I have to worry about different ways that, uh, you know, myself and people like me are disenfranchised. All those kinds of things are things that I have to think about and things that I have to consider uh, that may present barriers for me being successful. Growing up in my house, I grew up with my father and my older sister. My parents got divorced uh, when I was pretty young. I was three years old. My mom was pretty much not a part of my life, but for the most part, uh, I think my dad made up for the love that was missing. My father instilled a pride in me and my history and culture, uh, first and foremost by loving me uh, and teaching me how to love myself. Unfortunately, there are things in our society that uh, sometimes promote people of color of thinking that they're less than. And my father wanted me to understand that we came from a beautiful people with a long line of history. My father was a skilled trades electrician for Delphi Automotive, which was a GM company. He was a former drug dealer, an alcoholic, and a drug abuser. And for his kids, he wanted to change his life because he wanted to be a good father and a good example. I did the, the big three. That's the Big Mac. Marijuana, alcohol, and cocaine. And I tried not to be drunk in front of the kids, but <laughs> Nobody's really capable of doing that. You manage as well as you manage. I had no idea the things that women went through raising kids by themselves, but I learned. I had a lot of good times with my kids. The reason that Marvin, I believe, was able to flourish and persevere is because when he was young, there was periods where I had lucidity and I taught Marvin some real important lessons and Marvin developed a good strength of character. He had to take responsibility because I wasn't responsible enough. My father taught me the value of a dollar and that money was important, but he himself did not know how to properly manage or properly invest money. And much like most uh, either first generation college students or young black people from uh, an impoverished area, we just don't know a lot about managing money, uh, a 401k, a savings account. Those are things that we are not necessarily taught from a young age. And so when it comes to something like an education, it's like, oh, okay, just, you know, take out the loans, you'll be fine. All right, let's go. For me, sports is everything. Um, it provides my competitive nature. I grew up in a place like Warren it's steel sports and God, and particularly in that order. And I didn't want to work in a steel mill, but I certainly wanted to be an athlete. I was heavily recruited in football. I was all American in track and field. I was one of the centerpieces of the greatest track and field team to ever come through Warren G. Hardy. Playing sports was definitely my ticket to go to college. I knew that sports was going to be the way that not only I was going to go to school, but going to be the way that I went to school for free. How y'all doing? Is that Jamaica May right there? Yeah. Marvin Logan, I ain't seen you since like we graduated from high school. Warren, Ohio is, is certainly an interesting place. And there wasn't a lot of hope growing up in Warren. You saw lots of things change. You saw a booming small town, uh, you know, whittled down, uh, abandoned buildings everywhere. Uh, folks losing their jobs, losing their homes, losing their cars. 
When I was young, I, I had some issues with behavior. I would get into a lot of fights. Most of it began when I got older and realized the complexity of the situation with my parents divorcing. That mixed with some of the difficulties of growing up in my area used to cause me to get into a lot of trouble into school. My cousin Derek Tolles had retired from the NFL. He had moved back home and started a nonprofit organization dedicated to giving youth opportunities that otherwise they wouldn't have. I was able to really get involved with uh, the organizations called Inspiring Minds. Our whole goal as an organization was to take our students out, and specifically students like Marvin, and show them the world. And just show them that, you know what, look, here's someone that looks like you and they came from the same environment that you came from, but look, they made it, and this is how they did it. So the Milwaukee trip that we went on was actually our first trip. It was so big in Marvin's life because he was able to sit in front of, at that time, probably one of the biggest stars, an usher in the, in the game. I remember all the kids were really excited and uh, Usher came in and I, I thought to myself, you know, how many times am I gonna get the opportunity to meet a, a, a mogul entertainer business person? And so I gotta make this count. And so I literally, uh, when it was over, I just walked up to him. I just saw a student who, uh, who just needed a little more exposure. We just kind of struck a bond and uh, he inspired me, you know, through the hardships and the, the obstacles that he had to overcome. And he always found a way to still stay enthusiastic and, and, and just really lead. From that trip, he was able to go to different camps and he built relationships and those were priceless. I felt the experiences that we were able to provide for him showed him that, you know what, I'm gonna do something with myself and I can. If Derek had not come back into my life at that point, we probably wouldn't be having this interview. The cost of college never crossed our minds. I was a standout athlete in high school, and I thought, hey man, I'm gonna go out here, I'm gonna win championships and get an education, and somebody else is gonna foot the bill and I'm never gonna have to worry about it. Kent State made me feel wanted. I just felt like I want to make an investment in a place that's making an investment in me. I needed to take out loans when I was a freshman to uh, cover all of the different things that you know weren't included in my scholarship, like clothes and a laptop. And also at the time, I didn't have health insurance. And so the loan money was also helping me to cover uh, my doctor's expenses. I think at 18, I had no idea the kind of responsibility that I would be taking on with loans. I had no clue. I just knew I needed money, and here was an easy way to get some. When Marvin was in college, I did finally make a decision to live different. All the things that I learned in rehab and counseling, all the meetings, I put that stuff into practice. And then I was able to make a commitment to God and to my church, and everything kind of started falling into place because I started doing what I was supposed to do instead of what I wanted to do. Because I realized if I kept living the way that I was living, I was going to kill myself. When I first got to school, all of those nagging injuries through high school that I was able to run through and that I was able to compete through started getting worse and worse. And then I re-injured my back. And unfortunately, this time, you know, I wasn't able to run through it. At the time, I wasn't even sure if school was going to continue to be an option for me. That was a substantial amount of money that I was gonna have to figure out how to come up with. He was in a deep, dark place. I know it was heavy on him. Um, he had been through so much and he had finally made it. But I just told him that you went to school to get a degree. That's why. You went to school to better yourself. I think a lot of people would have quit at that point. But what I admire about Marvin, even at that hard and rough time, he didn't want to go back to where he had came from. 
I decided I want this degree, I, I want this education, and I started taking out uh, the maximum amount of, of federal loans. It was at that time when I no longer was competing that I began to put all of my time uh, and student leadership. I served as president under the most diverse body the student government had ever seen and it provided the opportunity to be able to really have their voices heard and, and to push forth a lot of things on campus. Graduation was surreal for me. I remember uh, when my name was called and I walked across the stage and all of the hard work from, you know, when I was a, a young kid and having all kinds of problems with my behavior and doing things that could have landed me in prison. Uh, to be able to, to graduate with a college degree, I cried a lot that day and I cried tears of joy and I was glad that I got to share it with my family. Since I've graduated, I haven't had to make any payments on my undergraduate loans because I went straight into uh, graduate school. I am currently pursuing my master's degree at Clark Atlanta University in African American Studies. It was one of my top choices and, and I didn't care what it took. I just decided I was gonna go. I would have rather that he went to work for a while and saved some money and then decided to go to grad school, but Marvin's old enough now to decide what he wants to do for himself. I think uh, getting a graduate degree will provide me the opportunity to have more chances to be an executive leader uh, in a nonprofit organization or to be a, a professor at a, at a college or a university. My graduate program at Clark Atlanta costs almost $10,000 a semester. In order to finish, uh, I'll be taking on a, a significant amount of debt, upwards of $40,000. This is an awkward turtle, a turtle that's turned over on its shell and can't crawl. So whenever there's an awkward situation, then you have an awkward turtle. I've never heard of me. I didn't ask you if you'd heard of anything. Said, oh man, the camera. <laughs> Moving on. When Marvin uh, went off to college at uh, Kent State, we still were able to stay connected. He made time to come down to Atlanta to still engage with the organization. And so after graduation, we were able to uh, bring him on board. Now he's uh, gainfully employed with our organization and paying it forward with the things that he was able to receive, he's able to give it back to our youth. At Usher's New Look, I uh, work in operations and, and programs, and I help uh, our students develop a career path, help them uh, get into college, connect them with people in the industries uh, that they are, are passionate in. Marvin has really been able to utilize his story of student debt and just his experience in college as a teachable moment for our students. But having the real world application from Marvin is really invaluable to our students. Have you started thinking about how you want to pay for college? Oh uh, yes. <laughs> and what you gonna do? Scholarships, 10th grade, starting next year. Mm -hmm. I'm applying for scholarships all the way until I graduate from high school. I love animals, but I also love math. So I'm really not, sure about what I want to do, but I think I want to do both. And then hopefully I get to relax, but you know that. You to what? Relax. I'm sorry, I don't understand. You <laughs> see. <laughs> I think at times I worry that maybe something will happen in my life and I won't be able to pay off my debt. And to know that I'm continuing to take on more is a bit of a concern. I think if I would have had the opportunity to have health care and be able to see doctors through high school and through college uh, with the different injuries that I had, I think my career and my life would look a lot different. I can't promise that I would have been able to go to the next level uh, as an athlete, but I certainly wouldn't have had to incur uh, the amount of debt that I have. When I first moved to Atlanta, I wasn't able to get my own apartment. And eventually, I was able to move into a boarding house close to campus that's accessible for me to go to class and to go to work. Currently, I share a space with uh, seven other uh, undergraduate students. Uh, I have my own bedroom, and we share a bathroom and a kitchen. It's challenging at times, but it definitely uh, suits my needs. Right now, we're driving to the neighborhood that I live in. These neighborhoods are riddled with abandoned buildings, boarded homes, liquor stores, and violence. You 
see it so often with kids that we work with with Usher's New Look, where you go to their high school graduations and it's the biggest celebration that you've ever seen because for one, nobody ever expected them to get there. And two, nobody expected to ever celebrate anything in their lives ever again. Now you want to talk about some violence. I go into any ghetto in America, I will not drive through here at night. I think uh, understanding the impact of my debt is going to cause me to have to take a, a real critical look at where I want to move on from my life from this point. When would I like to get married? When would I like to have children? When would I like to buy a home? I'm really confident that that same perseverance that he used to graduate high school, graduate college, he'll tap into those same skills to meet this challenge. My plan for uh, paying off uh, my student loan debt is to opt into income-based repayment plans and uh, to continue my work in the public sector uh, to qualify for a loan forgiveness so that I can be able to get the weight of that debt off of my shoulders. You know, the old saying, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. That's really where his heart lies, is servicing others, taking care of people and helping people that can't help themselves. He, he wants to fight for them because some of the struggle he saw growing up were things that he couldn't do but he wanted to do. He wants to see to it that other people don't have the same struggles. The only thing that can stop me is me. And if, as long as I'm in check, I'm always gonna continue to climb higher and be successful.